Hello, I am Munir Hogg and welcome to my Android app development tutorial. Today our topic is in VVM and some Android architecture components. This tutorial is all about theories on MVVM, no codes included. I myself do not like theories, I prefer jump into codes and make small runnable programs. But today's topic is uh, very important to realize as MVVM is a major Android app development design pattern. Sometimes it is important to know it before jumping into actual coding and there is nothing worse than writing code which you don't understand. So developing an Android app is easy, but developing a maintainable, robust and testable code is hard. For any developer, there is nothing better than having a clean structured code. And if you want to achieve this, you must have uh, follow a design pattern for your projects like MVC, MVP or MVVM. Android provides us uh, some first party architecture component like live data room and view model that helps us to build robust maintainable and independent codes using those architecture components supports we can construct and use any design pattern like mvc or mvp or even mvvm please remember every design pattern has its own advantages and disadvantages it is the developer's duty to choose the right design pattern that works and fits well for his or her project. For this tutorial, I have cherry picked MVVM, which is the most popular and widely used, widely used Android design pattern among developers. MVVM stands for Model, View and View Model. View is consists of uh, fragments and activities, basically what we see on a screen. Uh, views handle only the immediate interaction with the user. View model is basically a link between model and view, responsible for wrapping the model and preparing observable data needed by the view. Model is uh, where uh, you put all the all the data, state, and business specific code. Uh, it is not tied to the view, which uh, makes it reusable in many contexts. I will explain view model and view model later in this video. Please watch till the end. Before explaining how MVVM really works, I think it is good to know why we use MVVM when everything is working fine. The main reason of using MVVM is separation of concerns. Separation of concerns is a beautiful thing and every single design pattern tries to achieve the uh, separation of concerns. In case of MVVM, there are three inherent parts which helps, uh, help in accomplishing the separation of concerns, models, views and view models. This separation of concerns make Android project loosely coupled and easily manageable. Secondly, I make the code un understandable. As a beginner or novice Android app developer, oftentimes we do dreadful spaghetti code by writing UI related things, um, data and business logic all inside fragment or activities. Now writing data and business logics inside uh, an activity or fragment is a notoriously, notoriously bad practice. It tends to lose the understandability and testability of code. Consider a situation. You were working on an app and you were doing very well, but you didn't follow any design pattern like MVVM. Suddenly, you just have left the company or you were deployed to another team and a new person has taken charge. Now, as the code is not written following any design pattern uh, and well structured, that new uh, software developer will face a lot of difficulties. The code will be a nightmare for him. Using design pattern like MVVM will help to make project more understandable. My second point uh, brings me to the third point, which is maintainability of code. As uh, MVVM advocates all uh, well structured and loosely coupled system, it becomes easier for software developers to apply even big changes in any part of code without interrupting other parts of code. For example, 
app design can be changed from activities or fragment without making any changes on few model or models hence code maintain maintainability is increased now i will like to give a short brief on how mvvm works the first layer is view it consists of activities and fragments it is a part of your app which handles what the user sees and touches on the screen the view only uses to represent ui or make an immediate interaction with user for example in an activity or fragment a text view will only appears but uh, that text view doesn't know what the text data will come from views can only display uh, things on the screen which they get from view models do android specific operations and dispatch user interaction events like interacting with click events of a button the next layer is view model which is uh, which itself an android architectural component uh, it provides data for the view by getting it from model view model gets data from model and prepares data to show inside the view layer so the view model acts as a gateway from view to other lower parts of the application and thus activities or fragments do not have the concern where is the data coming from or where is the data going to the activity or fragment has a direct references to its view model as the reference is one directional view model doesn't have any clue about which views are using it this is amazing for testing and simply less entanglement between classes it is also possible for uh, multiple views to build bind a single view model the best uh, part of view model is it survives configuration changes we may already know that uh, when we rotate our android devices or make any runtime changes like change the language of app uh, or um, at that time our activity gets destroyed to retain the state of the activity earlier we need to do a lot of complex uh, life cycle related tasks uh, but view module provides us the facility to survive from um, such runtime configurations change uh, runtime configuration changes pretty easily <coughs> our last layer of mvvm is model model acts as a data provider and the code to fetch the code to fetch and update the data the data can be retrieved from different sources like SQLite database or database from web server or even from Firebase. Model is where you put all data, state and business specific code. Model is responsible for uh, providing data to view model. It is, it is not tied to view thus makes it reusable in many contexts. But the view model does not interact with model directly instead intermediate class named repository is uh, used there is nothing special of repository repository is a single source of data that encapsulate the source of data like sqlite or web server it adds abstraction between view model and model repository provides clean apis to view model and thus view model doesn't have any um, concern of what the data is coming from now to use local db such as sqlite or realm database we have an android architecture component named room room is basically a wrapper of local database that relieves us from writing sqlite um, sql related boilerplate codes like creating and updating tables and rows and writing queries to make database operations room also provides compile time verification to check code and prevent us from making runtime error for committing any mistake while while there is uh, a typo in sql statement room has a class named entity entity predominantly represents the tables in the, in the database instead of creating and updating table direct, tables directly in databases we do those kinds of stuff through entity in name uh, much safer way then we have another class DAO, D -A -O. 
DAO. DAO stands for Data Access Object, which is responsible for communicating with database. This is all about MVVM. Uh, in short, the data source is model, the activity and fragments are the views, and the view model acts as a group between view and model. If these things are implemented, uh, implemented properly, we will get a nice clean architecture where layers are modular and uh, decoupled from each other. Every layer will have well-defined responsibilities. Every, every layer will know, only know about components directly below it. The view model retrieves data from repository, but it doesn't need to know the different source of data of model. And the view gets data from view model without knowing anything about model or doesn't uh, need to do any database related operations. But we are not done yet. We have one more important things to discuss how models, views, and view models pass data. First, we consider the scenario between view and view models. View has a direct reference to its view model, but view model has no clue which views uh, are using that view model. We need uh, something to noti notify any data changes to view and automatically update the UI. We can do this thing using live data. Live data is an Android architectural component which uh, works as a wrapper that holds any data. Live data is an observable, observable that being observed by the view, which means when the data inside the live data changes, the view gets notified and the UI get refreshed, refreshed automatically. A major good uh, feature of live data is uh, live data is life cycle hour. Live data knows the state of view whether it is in background or foreground. If the view is in background, live data automatically stops updating the view. So we do not need to manually configure the observer operations. Uh, in a nutshell, we have a view model which survives the configuration changes and we have observable live data that automatically automatically does the right things at right time and thus saves us from many life cycle related potential bugs and memory leaks not only that uh, the view observes data uh, in the view model but also view model observes data in repository which in turn observes data coming from local database and from remote data source since room has its own internal observer it can uh, notify and update data in view model out of box we do not need to implement that observer in our code the last important thing to uh, mention here is that you should ad always adhere to the reference tree for example do not make your view model get data from database directly while bypassing repository everything has its purpose and makes it uh, makes the code modular and easy to maintain and nice to read you will read your code many times and then you write it so make readability making readability is the number one priority don't be lazy to create abstractions you will thank yourself later so far we have learned a lot about mvvm and its different layers we also have learned about Android architecture components like live data, room, and view model. Now you have the basics. You can start uh, building a real app utilizing this pattern. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to be get updated to be uh, updated when a new tutorial on building an MVVM app comes out. Please give a like if you like the video. Also, please comment if you have any questions or any suggestions. Take care. See you in the next video. Till then, thank you and goodbye.